Braking systems in F1. There were quite doubtful moments at the Australian Grand Prix involving Carlos when his Ferrari, up in flames at the time, started rolling back down the hill at Turn 4. It then raised quite a few questions about the braking systems of F1 and whether F1 cars have a handbrake. Let's find out. F1 cars do not have a handbrake, but instead have a complex system for braking. The reasons for that are really interesting, as is the real way that F1 cars can apply brakes from 200 miles per hour to zero in four seconds. Watch the video to the end to know more. Formula One's main priority is speed. And to achieve the sport's astronomical speeds, the car's weight has to be reduced as much as possible. This is one of the major reasons that F1 cars do not have handbrakes. Ferrari has even been known to change their car's paint scheme from glossy to matte to save a few grams of weight. This is how important each gram of weight is in F1. This can be the dividing line between a win and a loss and is taken very seriously. Another reason F1 cars don't have handbrakes is that they aren't considered necessary. There is usually no reason for an F1 car to stop on an uphill part of the track. Even if there is, they can stay in gear to stop it from rolling backward. However, it is a problem when, like what happened with Carlos Sainz in the 2022 Australian Grand Prix, an F1 car started rolling back down the hill while there was a need to escape the car. With Sainz, this reason was a fire in the car. Instead of having a handbrake, F1 cars allow for pressing a button to lock the rear differential, which corrects understeering through corners. This, however, can slow F1 drivers down and potentially cause oversteering. Now, to understand more about how brakes work, let's look into the braking system of F1. Braking in F1 is another essential component of winning. If the braking around corners is not conducted properly, it can also negatively affect the driver's lap time. Similar to a road car, the brakes on a Formula 1 car work on all four wheels. So how exactly does the system work? When the driver steps on the brake pedal, it compresses two master brake cylinders, one for the front wheels and one for the rear, which generates fluid pressure. At the front, the system is very straightforward. The fluid pressure is delivered directly to the front brake calipers. Inside each caliper, six pistons clamp pads against the disc, and it is this friction that slows the car down. But things get a lot more complex at the rear side. At the rear, the wheels can be decelerated by three separate sources. Friction from the brakes, resistance from the spinning engine, also called engine braking, and finally electric braking that results from harvesting energy by the hybrid electric motor, the MGUK. Although the driver can adjust each of these effects independently on his steering wheel, when he presses the brake pedal, the three systems act in concert via the brake-by-wire BBW system to provide the driver with the overall retardation he has requested. When the driver presses the pedal, the fluid pressure he generates in the rear braking circuit is picked up by an electronic pressure sensor. The signal from this sensor represents the overall rear braking demand from the driver and is passed to the electronic control unit, ECU, where it is turned into a series of commands to brake the rear of the car. The harder the driver presses, the larger the signal. The larger the signal, the more aggressive the ECU will send out demands to the three rear systems, the brake calipers, the engine braking and the MGUK, to provide the retardation requested. The ECU distributes its efforts to the three systems according to the manner that the team has set up the car modified by the way that the driver has adjusted the switch settings on the steering wheel. Why would we ever want to have a rear braking system that arbitrates between three separate systems when we could simply use conventional brakes like a normal car? Well, the answer to these questions falls into two camps, safety and performance. Once you have committed to using a brake-by-wire BBW system to control the rear braking, you need to ensure that there is a safe backup in the event that the system fails. This is why we go to all the trouble of using the driver's pedal action to produce hydraulic pressure in the brake line. If the BBW system ever fails, then it is immediately bypassed and the pressure generated by the driver's foot is passed directly to the rear brake calipers, just like in a normal car. The driver actually has to provide all the force for braking in F1. Drivers use their body weight to get enough pressure for the car's deceleration. This amounts to withstanding huge G-forces of around 5 Gs. The deceleration causes 50 kilos of pressure on the driver's head and helmet. F1 braking, although without a handbrake, is a complex beast. The rear braking system is especially intricate to provide for safety and performance. Handbrakes on F1 cars are seen as unnecessary and too heavy to slow down the car. What do you think of this whole situation? Let us know your opinion in the comments. And while you're down there, leave a like and subscribe to our channel. And we'll see you in the next video.